Now, BlackBerry, or the artist formerly known as Research in Motion, might have kicked off the smartphone era, but in the intervening years, it has seen a significant decline. Now that the new BlackBerry 10 platform is kicking off, let's see how it compares to other modern smartphone platforms. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is BlackBerry 10 versus Android. So as you can see, we're using a Samsung Galaxy Note 2 as our Android device, and the differences between these two platforms are extreme, and they start right at the lock screen. Whereas on Android, you have to press a physical button to wake up the device, either the power standby key or the home button. On BlackBerry, you can do that. You do have that option. But as we just discussed in our first impressions video, you can also just swipe up from the bottom to remove the lock screen. So that is pretty cool. We like that a lot. But uh, Android does give you a bit more versatility. You can unlock it sort of from anywhere, bottom or top. And if you are running a skin on top of Android, you probably have a whole lot of lock screen op options like TouchWiz gives you on Samsung. Whereas with BlackBerry, not much going on. You just have your peek at your notifications there, your uh, recent events. It actually looks a lot like Windows Phone 8, which we'll talk about in our next video. Um, but you just have to swipe up from the bottom. If you try and swipe up from anywhere else, the device is like, what are you, what are you trying to do to me? I don't, I don't understand. And if you get it wrong enough, it'll finally tell you, listen, you've got to come down here. So there that is. Moving on to one of the principal reasons for a smartphone is notifications. On Android, you have the familiar persistent notification shade, which you can pull down, and that shows all your messages in an aggregate list. And if you want to take a peek inside, you can just do the two-finger pull down if you're on Jelly Bean or later. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there. You've got weather widgets, and Samsung's TouchWiz has included some toggles along the top for handy, quick settings changes. So that's Android, and then but on BlackBerry, go ahead and unlock there. We are doing something a little bit different. We pull up from the bottom. We can peek right at our notifications there to see if any of them are things we want to deal with. And if they are, then we just continue that action slider across. And we have our BlackBerry Hub, which aggregates everything together in a similar fashion. And then there is one more layer to this where you can pull this over and you can see your, your Gmail, your text messages, your Twitter, all that kind of stuff right over there. And if you want to say, you just want to come on over and hop in to say text messages, then you absolutely can do that. And to get out of that Compose view, you'll notice there is no back button, just as there is no home button on the back of the BlackBerry. You just swipe to go back to where you were. It takes a little getting used to, but once you are used to it, it ain't no thing. Now, Google being the leader in search that it is, you might expect that Android has a pretty good on-device search functionality, and you would be correct. From the home screen, you can just tap on the Google bar or wherever you choose to put the Google bar and search for, say, Pocket Now. Bet you didn't see that one coming. The device will search the web for Pocket Now in the standard Google search, of course, but you can also come on down here and search the phone, which will give you contacts as well as any other indication of the phone. Now, I use the Pocket Now word very frequently on my device, as you might imagine, but Android is only giving me results for my contacts and for Chrome, where I have browsed to Pocket Now pages. I'm not seeing anything else. And that holds true on our Nexus 7 as well. Executing the same search on BlackBerry, as you can see, it's a recently used item, but this persistent search button is down here as well when this bar is visible on the home screen. And we can go ahead and do a search for Pocket Now on the BlackBerry and see what that looks like. As you can see, I don't need to hit enter or anything like that. The, the uh, results come up as I type. Here are my contacts, here are my browser results, but I also am getting results from inside my messages where the word Pocket Now has been used. And then I can extend the search down here to other apps, to such as BlackBerry App World, Maps Application, Google, etc. What about launching an app? Everybody's talking about apps, 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 and apps are so important. So how do you launch them? Well, on Android, of course, you have your groupings of folders, if you like, on your home screen, which you can tap. Or you just have standalone apps sitting there, like, say, Mobile Hotspot, and you tap it, and you go ahead and jump right into that. Hit back to go back to the home screen, or hit the home button to go back to the home screen. Or you can just go into the app drawer, and uh, on your app launcher here, you have all your apps laid out in a grid. It is all fairly standard, and it works fairly well. You can also launch an app, though, by tapping the search bar on an Android device. And say you want to launch Foursquare, you just start typing it, it auto-completes, and you go ahead and tap Foursquare, and then it jumps right in. 
On the BlackBerry, the story is similar. Once we get past the lock screen, you're in an application grid here. If you're in the grid, you can go ahead and just tap on any app you like. Say, let's just go into Foursquare to be consistent. The app pops up like that. That's a little different there. We don't seem to be able to launch the Foursquare app from a text search on the device. So that is different. If you frequently launch apps by typing in their names, you will have some getting used to to do on the BlackBerry. But there's yet another way of launching apps on these devices, and that is multitasking. So on Android, if we hop past the home screen and say we're in an app like Twitter, and we want to go ahead and jump into Foursquare, on regular Android, we would go ahead and press the multitasking key. On the Galaxy Note 2, we'll press and hold the home button, and we're in our multitasking ribbon, which shows recently used apps. We can go ahead and just tap it and go right into Foursquare there. By contrast, on the BlackBerry, once we get past the lock screen here, our recently used apps are front and center. This is the first page of the home page, and you can vertically scroll through your running apps this way. You have, of course, your app launching tray to the right here with its cascading icons, but the principal screen is the apps you've run recently and the apps which are running. So you don't need to take an extra step. These apps are already here. We can just tap on Foursquare, and we're right in there. And if you want to get rid of one of them, you just tap the X to clear it. It's not necessarily a better way of multitasking. Uh, it depends on your school of thought. It's just different. It certainly is more efficient if you do use many of the same apps all the time. Now let's say you wanted to send an email from either of these devices. On Android, you just go ahead and hop into the Gmail app. I have already started an email just to, to illustrate that, but that's you're fairly standard. You hop into the email app to send an email. On BlackBerry, you'd think it would be the same way. When you're on your home screen here, no, you can hop on over to the app tray, but no, you do not come over here to do your email. You hop to the left, go into the hub, and of course, here's your recent messages. If you want to, you can hop on over here and choose which mailbox you want to use, choose where you want to compose, or much, much easier, just hop down here, hit compose, and then you can choose what application you'd like to use to send your email. Finally, to wrap it up, it wouldn't be a comparison if we didn't look at the respective app stores. So let's start with Android and have a look at our old friend, the Google Play Store, which features, I don't know why I had to re-agree to the terms of service, maybe because I switched countries, which features apps in addition to content all arranged in a linear, feet, in a linear fashion. You can swipe from left to right to go into different categories and top categories and so on, and you can search directly for an app right here. So let's say we're searching for a particular app called Tricorder because we are nerds. There we are. Scientific Sci-Fi Scanner sounds delightful. Go ahead and hit install, and then it, you have to agree to the terms. It tells you what permissions that the app is going to require and how compromised it's going to make your security. You can accept and download, and then it downloads in the background and gives you the option to keep shopping, which we can now do. And if we were in the Google Play Store and in the United States, we could search for an awesome band called Pinback, but we don't have access to that content here in Canada for some reason. So we'll have to leave that for a more detailed comparison. Let's go ahead and buy an app in the new BlackBerry app world, which I actually have not done. This will be my first time seeing this, so I'm sure I'll have to agree. End user license agreement and some such. This is a first time load. Oh, maybe not. Well, here we go. Look at these. Oh, well, this is a very nice layout here. So we have a featured app up top, as well as trending apps and games down below, a section for top paid games, top paid apps, and it looks like we can search down here as well. So let's say we want to search for, I'm sure there will be no response for Tricorder. Ah, BB Sensors, Tricorder Environments. Well, I'm completely wrong. This is uh, using the sensor capabilities of your device to scan your surroundings. Well, that sounds like fun. I'm going to go ahead and download that. Download starting. Go ahead and the progress bar is proceeding up top. Now I can go back and I can do other things while this is installing, I believe is what was, is what was said today. And then if you go down lower, okay, here we have our content, our top movies, our top TV episodes. I wonder if they uh, feature the awesome band Pinback. Yes, that rocks. Anyway, more on that as we get more detailed. But for now, it's just a quick look between BlackBerry 10 and Android Jelly Bean here in Toronto. Once again, Michael from Pocket Now. Stay tuned for a lot more.